Morning guys, I'm the Tech Prepper. I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, today we're going to do, again, my style of review videos, and we're going to continue with the line of the TPA pack frames from Armorlock. Um, I've done about three videos in the series with this full uh, kit on the TPA 817B. I'll link that below uh, in the description. But today we're really going to talk about my newest radio, which is the Yaesu 857D, and the reason why I've chosen to configure uh, my radio in this configuration and then use the TPA pack frame as kind of the platform, if you will, for what I want to do in the field. And what we're going to talk about today with the TPA um, 857 from Armorlock, for the most part, applies to the TPA 891, which is uh, almost the same size in terms of overall dimensions. So I know a few people have been really requesting the 891, uh, but more on that in a bit. Okay, so let's talk about the goals of why I wanted a pack frame as the platform for the way I do radio. So first and foremost, I like to do summits on the air activations and basically trek a radio up a peak and set up a station. I also like it for portable work, whether I can just throw something like this in the Jeep and have the ability to set up comms very quickly. And that's the most important part of why I like this system. I can get up on the air on VHF, UHF in a matter of 30 seconds or less. And then if I have the antenna uh, for HF, same thing. Um, otherwise, there's just some additional overhead to set up the HF side of things. Um, three, I like to abuse my gear. Actually, I don't like to. Um, I tend to be harder on my gear since I don't typically operate in the shack. Um, so having the protection that's offered by a frame that protects all the controls is something that I really needed. So in my mind, the uh, TPA pack frames, and here's the 891 as an example, um, they offer lots of protection and accessibility to all the controls, uh, protection on the uh, back of the rig for uh, all of the connectors so they don't get dinged, lots of airflow, plenty of attachment points uh, to attach other gear to it. But the um, real value comes not on just setting this on the desktop, uh, which I'm doing with the 891 in my shack right now, but the ability to have it in the right bag. And again, this is just how I tend to use it. So let's take a look at, at what I have. So first of all, I have found the perfect bag, in my opinion, for the 857D. And this bag also works with the 891. And I'll put a link down below. Uh, I did pay for the bag. It, I forget which company it's from, but it is the PRC 117 Golf Bag. So it's designed to hold that radio, but it works pretty well here. So there's a clasp at the top. And at that point, I have all of the controls accessible to me. Um, the most powerful thing about this platform is the ability to relocate, in this case, the VHF, UHF antenna, and the HF antenna. And optionally, you could relocate the uh, six pin mini DIN and CW key on the bottom. Um, I'm not running that configuration right now. So when I'm out in the field, I actually stand this unit straight up, sit on the floor, and just operate the radio. Now, in the fastest configuration uh, that makes sense to me, I essentially can also put on a whip antenna. So I added on this pouch here um, a little Condor uh, admin pouch that has basically a pencil, my right in the rain notepad, and then I have a stack of laminated um, field cards that walk me through everything I need to do to run various operations, uh, tables for frequencies, critical settings, things of that nature. So the golf pouch, uh, the PRC 117 golf pouch is nice because I have the option if I want to, to add um, additional gear on the side and it's still pretty slim. In fact, this whole unit fits inside of my uh, rucksack. My preferred antenna with this system is the Comet uh, BNC24. I like it because it, it's made out of that um, flexible material they use for uh, eyewear, and uh, I can actually loop it on itself and stick it in that pouch. But the great thing about this is to get on the air, I quite literally just have to put on the antenna on the VHF side and turn on the rig. 
And we're essentially on the air. Let me see if I can tune real quick to a, maybe an FM frequency. Trips, even concerts, yay! So warmer weather is also All right, the great success. AC service. And you'll notice right now, I'm actually sitting too high up to operate this. I actually like sitting on the ground on a pad or on a small uh, camping chair and look directly over it. So it's a little high when you're sitting on a table, so keep that in mind. But you can see very quickly to get on the air. And the other thing I like about this antenna, I was looking for the perfect uh, two meter antenna for simplex work, which I like to do when I'm on a summit, uh, simplex work when I'm out here in uh, the backyard, uh, repeater work, uh, digital work too, um, APRS, things of that nature. Um, this antenna allows me to do 20 watts, and since this, this 857D is a 50 watt radio, it's actually a pretty good mix and gives me a lot more power than my um, HT. And keep in mind, this whole system built around this pack frame, other than the security and the ability to relocate some of the uh, connection hardware, um, lets you do whatever you want. So I've taken an old um, HT pouch from Tactical Tailor. This was previously holding my Baofeng on my chest rig. I've switched over to my Yesu instead. And I'm actually using it now to hold the, uh, the hand mic. So it's a really nice place for me just to be able to drop the cable in and cinch this down and basically have the ability to run uh, FM, uh, voice, or SSB, uh, whatever I want to do. So that's optional. Uh, the other thing, looking on the front here, I'm actually running uh, basically everything I need for digital. So the reason why I'm actually liking the 857D uh, is that it's all band, all mode. It takes me all the way from 160 uh, meters all the way down to 440. So I can do everything, and it's a 100-watt radio. Uh, so I can run up to 50 watts on VHF and 20 watts UHF, and then single sideband 100 watts. So really cool stuff. So this radio does everything for me. Um, there isn't one thing I can't do with this. Um, I do have a little bit of a mess in here, but what I want to show you is that I also run full digital. So this is also now my new field APRS station, uh, my field packet station, my station for Winlink uh, VHF, um, and also HF. So pardon some of the, the mess here. And uh, you'll notice coming out of the PRC-117 pouch at the top, I have this hole here. And I'm running a few things here. So first is the uh, cable coming out of the back for power. And then also the CAT control and then the audio interface cable. So a little bit of a, uh, it's not required, but since I want digital, this is kind of how I have it configured to come outside. Uh, and then I do have the uh, GPS uh, USB connector and then also my... Raspberry Pi 3. And uh, Seth, if you're watching from Armorlock, he did send me um, all these frames. I'm actually building him a identical configuration of this Raspberry Pi. In fact, we're gonna do that on the channel. And All right, I decided to do something a little bit different. I'm actually gonna show you um, how I can take down uh, this pack, and maybe you can get a sense for um, how slim it can be run. So I'm gonna take off the uh, Condor admin pouch with the Molly. All right, so we have one pouch down, and then I'm gonna disconnect the uh, Anderson power pole. The cool thing about this PRC-117 pouch are these two holes. So I'm actually running the uh, hand mic and all the cable through here, so I didn't have to cut a hole or run some janky configuration. So I'm gonna take off this piece here. Let's go ahead and also take out the cat control and the uh, audio interface. So you guys can accommodate whatever size bag. Uh, this is a 511 admin pouch. And like I said, it holds the 4.5 amp hour Biowino battery, which allows me to run this radio in the way that I do it uh, for maybe an hour and a half or so uh, in the field. And I have a secondary 4.5 amp hour Biowino battery I can bring with me. All right, so that's still pretty slim here. And uh, this actually fits incredibly well inside of my Everly Stock Fact Track. In fact, I can strap the whole thing to the top and open up the barn door, look straight down, and just start using the radio. It's amazing. One thing to note about these pack frames is that they have been designed very carefully by uh, Seth, the owner, so that you can use all of the controls. Now, I have the hand mic 
uh, basically going through the frame and through this hole. So in order to pull this out, I need to take off the control head. And on the Yesu, there's a little kind of switch here. And you could just basically push that back. And then you'll notice that I could still go ahead and pull out the entire control head. Now, this microphone, this is not an issue with the pack frame. It's more of uh, how difficult I've found to get the microphone out of the control head. Um, I basically just need to... Get this cable up. And my fingers are fat. There we go. And let's go ahead and put the, the head unit back on. There we go. All right, back in business. The um, PRC pack frame actually has, um, or the PRC uh, golf pouch has more molly in the back, so you can even attach this to uh, the outside of your sack if you want to. And it uh, has got D-rings too for um, strapping it to other gear like maybe your chest rig for example. But the other reason why I like the pouch I went with with the TPA pack frame is that it has a zipper compartment and this is designed for the PR117 golf radio which allows you access to the battery. But what this allows us to do is access all of the cables here without taking the entire radio out of the pouch. So really cool stuff. And all I'm going to do now is unplug our um, cat control, or actually our audio interface, and then cat control. And now I can go ahead and unthread all this stuff here. All right. So now we have the, the basic uh, pack frame all removed here. Uh, so a few things to note. Uh, one of the most powerful features is, one, you're fully protected. Um, I think even George from Pactena was referring to this as a roll cage. I haven't dropped it yet, but um, could be doable. Um, again, there are relocation mounts that you can mount anywhere on the hardware, anywhere you find a slot like this. It's just standard um, M-lock uh, kind of attachment points. And I think by default on the 857 package, you get the two BNC connector relocation mounts. There are no cables included. Uh, I actually found a couple cables that worked really well. Um, I have a beefier one that I'm using for lower loss on uh, VHF, UHF, and then a thinner RG316 for HF. And I think the runs that have worked well with this were a 12-inch cable. Uh, I think 10-inch might be a perfect, perfect fit. And then you could strap these cables down to uh, the frame if needed. I gotta move, guys. All right, guys, so uh, there's nothing I can do about that uh, motor. Uh, one of the neighbors, uh, maybe a quarter mile from here, is running their engine, so I do apologize. That's what you get for living in the country with no rules, which I love. Um, so, like I said, the um, beauty of the system is you can bring your own cabling. Um, I found that the tent... I already got him three seconds away from going down the street. All right, guys, so you've seen the uh, review of my other TPA pack frame videos for the 817. Um, essentially, the um, all the mechanics are the same. Uh, installation is the same. Same thing applies to the 891. Um, for those of you who have not seen the... Uh... So... Dude... All right, sorry about that guys. I think the situation is now resolved. So I think what we're gonna do is uh, take a look at the 817 videos because other than the frame uh, differences in size, all of the thoughtful considerations in the construction are the same. Oh God. Hey babies. Did you guys come out here to wreck daddy's video? Okay, go peepees. All right, guys, I hope I can salvage this video. Uh, I wanted to do these frames justice. Bottom line is um, I'm going to continue to run these frames for all of my operations. 
Um, I have less value for it in the shack for my 891 uh, because I quite honestly in the shack, I don't run the connectors on the front. When I have the 891 in the shack, I use the um, PL259 SO239 connector on the back side. Same thing with running digital. But if I were to stick this back in the bag, I do like having the relocation mounts so I can put this in the bag and operate straight up. Uh, the 857D now is my new uh, preferred radio to take in the field, uh, given that it has the, the extra power, uh, especially for uh, packet work that I like to do on two meters these days, um, and also FM voice and single sideband voice. Um, like I said, these have the same kind of thoughtful considerations as the 817 TPA pack frame videos I've done. There are three. I'll link those below. And everything is accessible in this unit here. You have uh, the ability to take out the control head on both the 891 and the 857. Uh, you can access all the controls. The only area that I've had difficulty with is on the 857 pack frame. The um, ability to use the up and down uh, band buttons to change. Um, I have a hard time getting into, but I've learned to basically just kind of wrap my finger around the the outside like this and then just kind of touch feel where it is. And that's why I think it's important to find a bag where the cutoff is about this height right here. And on the 857D, the cutoff there is, let's see, 11 and 3 quarter inches. And then if you get a bag that has a kind of a flap, so the camera bags do that well, um, the PRC golf pouch that I'm running has that little piece of fabric that goes across the top, um, you're fine. So uh, with that said, guys, I do apologize for kind of how this video was cut together. There were way too many distractions, even at 5.30 in the morning for whatever reason. But uh, yeah, so hopefully this gives you kind of a good overview um, for things like the dimensions and the... Uh, the weights, take a look at the Armor Lock uh, website. And I uh, just want to give a big shout out to Seth from Armor Lock. Um, he's actually turned out to be a really great uh, ham and buddy. We're on the phone once a week, just chatting now about all things ham radio. And uh, stay tuned. Like I said, I'm going to be using the pack frames, both the 817 and 857D, for every field op for the for foreseeable future. So I do love this. Um, if you guys are into MCOM, Soda, POTA, portable work, uh, consider uh, the armor lock pack frames. But yeah, as a big thank you, like I said earlier, I'm going to make him a uh, digital pie for the modes that I like to operate and basically turn it into a appliance that you just run completely headless and use the phone and the web browser as the interface to do a lot of the digital work. And we're going to do that build on the channel. So hopefully it's not too boring for you guys. I'm going to try to make it fun and exciting. But uh, with that said, guys, uh, my apologies for how this was cut together, and um, hope you guys are all doing well. Be strong, be safe, and be prepared.